Is it worth it to use a service like Acorns when they charge you a monthly fee, or should you only use free investing services? Acorns recently stopped offering their cheapest investment account for $1 per month, and now you have to pay either $3 or $5 per month. Is it too much? How do we figure this out? Obviously, it's annoying that it's not free, but $3 or $5 sounds like the kind of thing that people find off-putting. And based on the comment section in my videos, you guys do find it off-putting. You do not like this. Let's talk about how investing companies make money from us, what typical fees are, what an allowable amount of fee is, and then do some math to figure out exactly how bad Acorns is ripping us off. Or not. There's a number of different ways that investing services make money from us, and a lot of them are kind of cryptic. Like, it's kind of hard to figure out exactly how much that is, but here's some of them. First of all, payment for order flow. Payment for order flow is where there's a middleman involved that takes the orders from an investing service like Robinhood, and they process them for them, and everyone makes money in between. So the middleman makes money, Robinhood makes money, everybody's happy, except for technically people like us, because we're paying them to do this stuff for us. And it's taking little tiny fractions of a penny every time we make a trade, so we don't really feel it. We don't really care until you start to pay attention and you go, wow, this is a lot of money. For example, at Robinhood in particular, payments for order flow increased tenfold between 2019 and 2020, from $69 million to $687 million. $687 million. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Holy cow. Investment companies also make money on us through interest on cash deposits. Some charge a management fee for assets, like they manage in the form of a percentage of those assets that you have with them. Fees and commissions on trades. Margin lending obviously makes them money. Premium or upgraded services that they charge a fee to access. And I'm sure a whole bunch of other ways. Those are just the ways that I could find immediately. How does Acorns make money from us? Well, they do some of that profit making stuff too, but they also charge a monthly fee on top of that. So it sort of makes sense to me that they have a fee for everyone since they don't allow you to choose stocks to buy and sell yourself whenever you want. So their overall trading volumes and all the ways that people profit based on trading, they're kind of minimal when it comes to Acorns. Like we just don't trade that much when we're doing Acorns stuff. And they really don't incentivize trading in general, like they don't want you to keep switching from high risk to low risk or from traditional to ESG or anything like that. And so they really don't have much trading going on. I mean, it must be a tiny, tiny fraction of a percentage of the trading going on somewhere like Robinhood or Weeble. We have to be real here. Companies won't just live with minimal profit or less profit. So the fee that Acorns charges is the natural consequence. So let's talk about fees. What's a big fee? What's a normal fee? What's a small fee? For us to be able to claim outrage or acceptance at something like a monthly fee, we need to have a baseline to compare it to. A big fee, a big, nasty, disgusting fee that we have to avoid is something like an actively managed investment account. Paying for that pro to choose stuff for you has got to be the most expensive way to invest. These brokerages charge all the normal fees that all the other free brokerages charge and another huge fat fee on top, like one to 2%. That is massive. Maybe it doesn't sound like that much, but it is. And here's why. Let's do a little example. Let's say you've invested a bunch in your 20s and 30s and you have $100,000 saved by the age of 40. You're feeling good. You move that money to the exciting and well-marketed management of an active manager. This guy's a pro. Says all the right things. Does all the right things, apparently. Let's say for the sake of the example that you don't invest any more money with this account. You just let it ride for 20 years. The account gets a 10% return per year on average and the broker charges a 2% management fee. It's a little bit on the higher end, but it's not uncommon. After that 20 year period, the ending value of the account is just over $466,000. Guess how much you've paid in fees? 2% seems small. How bad could it be? How bad could it hurt? $10,000 in fees? 50,000? More. 100,000? More. $206,000 in total fees. That is nuts. 2% is way too much. Now, what about zero fees? What about these commission-free trading services like Robinhood or M1 Finance or these others that don't have big, fat, nasty management fees? How much do those cost us? If you're investing on your own and you're investing in something like index funds, there's still a fee involved and that's called an expense ratio. This is the cost to make that fund happen. The lowest ones are crazy, crazy low, something like 0.03% and some creep up to as high as nearly 1%. My typical goal is to keep fees below 0.3%. That's just a figure that I've chosen that I feel comfortable with. I find that there are a ton of options at or below that level. And so I feel like it's a good one to stick to. Obviously you can go into really specialized in boutique funds and pay a lot more, but I don't think that's essential for an overall portfolio. So as a comparison to that 2% number, let's see what 0.3% works out to in fees. We're gonna do the same example, the same setup. You're 40, you have 100K invested. You're gonna leave it sit for 20 years, get a 10% return. Guess how much the total fees were now? 100K? Nope, too much, less than that. 50K? 
Nope, it's still kind of a lot, like it's not nothing, but it's way less than the active manager. Total fees, 35,760. Now keep in mind, if that manager who you were paying to do investments for you had chosen that same index fund for you to invest in, you'd be paying both amounts combined. You'd have to pay that guy and you'd have to pay the expense ratio. So in that case, you'd have lost out on over $240,000 in profits. Yuck, ouch, nasty. So we have the big giant number. We have a small number. How much is too much? What's the right amount here? Well, with Acorns, we're still paying that expense ratio for the index fund that we're having access to, plus the monthly fee of either three or $5 per month. So we'll never be at only expense ratio level because we have that flat fee every month, but how much is really too much? How can we do this math and figure it out? Well, this is where we have to make a choice. I'm ready and willing to pay the expense ratio on the index fund. That's a no-brainer for me. I also think it's fair to pay a little bit of a fee for a service itself. So if I'm going to pick a number that's comfortable for me, I'm going to say 0.25%. That's the number that I feel like is totally fair. This is a ratio that I think is okay. It's not crazy. I'd rather it be less, but I think it's fair. So let's compare Acorn's monthly fees to that percentage. Whenever we translate that flat three to five dollars per month into a percentage, how much do you have to invest to get below that level of 0.25 that I chose is okay for me? In general, the way Acorn's is structured is different than a lot of other investing services because it is a flat fee. So the more we invest, the smaller the percentage is. If you just started and you only have $50 invested, well, three dollars per month is a massive fee. That $36 per year almost wipes out your entire account balance. That's not okay. At $500 total invested, that same $36 per year amounts to an absurdly high 7.2% fee. That's also crazy, totally crazy. Even at $1,000 total, $36 per year in fees is almost twice as much as an active manager at 3.6%. If we want to be as low as 0.25 that I chose, we have to invest $14,400. Finally, with that much invested, the $36 per year for the $3 per month membership goes all the way down to 0.25%. But the beauty of this flat fee is that if you keep investing more and more, the percentage of the fee continues to drop. If you have $20,000 invested, the 3% fee is a tiny 0.18%. Itty bitty. If you had 50K invested, the 3% fee is a microscopic 0.07%. And at 100K invested, that $3 per month fee is an almost imperceptible 0.036%. So you see how the fact that there's a flat fee here, it really benefits us in the long term if we stick with it because we end up with a fee that's so tiny, it's not even comparable to any other real investing service that charges you a percent of assets under management. Overall, I'd say that $3 a month is a small amount of money to pay a service if you like it and you think it's worth it, especially if that service helped you get started investing and before then you'd refuse to start. It's almost surely helped pay for itself multiple times over as long as you stick with it. These kinds of things and this kind of math can be really confusing because you're shelling out $36 per year to use an app. And that might feel annoying when a lot of apps are free and when one or 2% kind of feels small. Like why wouldn't I pay that active manager when one or 2% feels like such a little number? But I hope that doing the math with me here helped you compare those apples to apples and shed some more light on that decision. I personally am still happy using Acorns for some of our investing because I genuinely like the service. In the future, if that service becomes way less useful or the fees rise a bunch, then it's gonna be a different conclusion for sure. And at that time, it's easy easy enough to transfer the money to a different investing service if need be. I still think that the most critical thing is that you're investing. Use whatever app or service is trustworthy and helps you the most. The biggest cost here is the opportunity for you to have been investing and to not do it at all because you're caught up in the details of things like this. So make sure you get started. If you're just getting started and you want some more info about Acorns, I've made a handful of videos about it in the past and they're all linked in the description for you to find super easily. Hey, you've watched till the end of the video and I like to have a secret comment section for those of us that made it this far. Today's secret comment word is red flag because whenever we're investing, high fees are a red flag. So if you learned anything about Acorns or fees or how all this stuff works, Works, or you just enjoy the video and you think that this dual camera setup was kind of cool, then leave me a little emoji with a red flag or make a comment somewhere in there about red flags. I'll keep an eye out for these because they are my favorite comments by far. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing and I'll see you soon. Bye.